So this project actually started back in October when I first did a video on the Ultratech Minicom 5000. It was a tool that was used before text for the hard of hearing to be able to use the phone. You put your phone on top of that and you could type in what you say and it would send it over to another one of these on the other phone line and read it out. So you didn't actually need to use your ears to use the telephone. I did a video on those and how they work and the link is below. But the crux of the matter is they use Bordeaux code, a bunch of blip bloop bloops that run at a certain board rate. Yeah, you may recognize that term because it's still being used but the origin is from well the Bordeaux code. At the end of that video I mentioned about the idea of having a Bordeaux Cosmo. A Cosmo that could talk to you through Bordeaux code via some weird 1990s AI. Also in that video I mentioned that Felix Reiger analysed the Bordeaux code that was coming out of here which helped a patron of mine called Marknet develop a Raspberry Pi project over a few months that would actually talk via Bordeaux code to this and then respond to you using a 90s piece of AI so software called Mega Hal and this all together culminates to become well this project right here. Well Mark came over to one of the recent museum open days and dropped off this. We plugged it in and tried to get it working. Let's have a closer look. So this is what Mark left. It's a Raspberry Pi and a little mini audio interface for an input and an output. A bunch of LEDs. The LEDs send out signals of different parts of the code. For instance it's got transmit, receive, trimming memory, this that and the other. So what this is waiting to receive is Bordeaux code going into it and then it's going to sit and mull on it for a little bit and then send back its response. Mark's trained this 90s AI with uh, some lyrics from my songs. On the museum day when Mark came, we had a quick solution to test it and plug it in. Chris wired it into the microphone and the speaker on the telephone. So there's jack cables wired into both of these. And for that time, this actually worked. But it is a little bit rickety. I was going to quickly show you it with this, but every single time I try it, it seems to not work in different ways. I think it's because of weird grounding issues. And we'll just uh, leave that idea over here. What we're going to use instead is this, the NH88422. Dash free. Ooh. What this does is basically breaks out the two wires that go to a phone and splits them off into all of the things that we need so it's friendly to plug into something like the Raspberry Pi. It's incredibly simple and there's one here on a breadboard. Here's the interface coming from the Raspberry Pi. The grey wire is ground for the interface so we plug that into the common ground. The pink wire is the input to the Raspberry Pi. We plug that to the output of this which comes from the phone lines and then the Raspberry Pi output goes into the input of this. And then we plug the phone line on this side of this circuit board right here. So, and we take this wire and we plug it into the phone socket. Please ignore the mess right here, it's a bit messy. Oh, oh, plug that in, push that there, boom. Let's plug a phone into the other one. Right, so this is plugged into one phone line and this is plugged into another phone line. Let's pick up the phone. Last number. When the final selector goes over and selects this, because this is the last number, this light will turn on because it is answered. Oh, I sat it on too loud, it fed back. Lovely job, Lee. Hello, can you hear me? I'm singing through the phone. Right, so this is now connected to this. As you can see, it's starting to clip. Bring the Minicom 5000 into shot. Put the phone onto the top of it, like so. And then we'll write. Now it's thinking, and it... And that is Cosmo responding. Let's try it again. Ah, <sighs> Cosmo cares. So now we've got this figured out, I need to build a Cosmo around it. I asked Mark to include one or two LEDs so I could control uh, the eyes and the mouth servos of the Cosmo robot with them. But in his words, he just went for it and he ended up doing 15. So we've got the 3D printed parts for the Cosmo eyes, two ping pong balls. You can download the 3D printing files for these below. And we've also got some chattering teeth like usual Cosmo looks. We've got a spark fun wav trigger and we're gonna store some Cosmo samples and this and that and thinking noises in here. The cool thing about this is that it has 
has a built-in amplifier for a speaker, so we can just bolt a speaker onto the side of Cosmo. We've got an Arduino Nano. This is gonna control the servos for all of these. We've got a faceplate. I've already cut out the mouth hole, so yeah, there we go. Oh, and finally, we've got a transparent red Macintosh case. I got this uh, last year. Uh, I didn't really know what to do with it. These are a little bit pricey, so you've got to really want one. Uh, the link below if you're interested in getting one of these, but we're gonna build it all into this. <laughs> Looking good, Cosmo looking good. Maybe a little bit wonky, but still looking good. Right, let's build the brains behind the beast then, shall we? I've got this uh, wooden board. We've got the signal LEDs on this board. Next up, we have two power supplies that are gonna come from the 12 volt line. I've got two because I found that servos for the eyes and the mouth are better being on a separate power supply, less noisy. So they'll go somewhere there. We've got this board. It's got the MH88422 that we spoke about earlier. It's got the audio interface for the Raspberry Pi. So those are connected together. In the middle, there is a relay because we're also gonna have a bulb that lights up when Cosmo is ready to listen. We've also got the Raspberry Pi with the wires coming out for all of the LEDs and this, that and the other. And we've also got the SparkFun WAV trigger which is gonna trigger all of the sound. And there's gonna be a speaker plugged in. So yeah, let's, uh, let's plug everything in. So now we've got some samples loaded onto the WAV trigger. You'll see there's a bunch of jumper cables going over to the LEDs. So not only do the LEDs light up, they also, some of them, trigger uh, WAV trigger samples. Okay, you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Now we're going to wire an Arduino to the back of the servos and then we're also going to plug them into the LEDs as well so that is triggered and it can do some eyes and mouth movie things sort of in time to this thing and it'll be pretty much done and we can put it together. After that, I put some wires to the eyes and the mouths from some of the flashing LEDs and they basically got like this. So I figured we should give it a go and I'll show you what the heck it does and how creepy it really can be. I have no idea where I'm gonna put it in the museum yet, but let's, uh, let's give it a call, shall we? <laughs> Hello, Cosmo. The crazy thing is, is Cosmo has learned how to say go ahead. It never was programmed to say go ahead. It just, it just figured it out.
also, if you have one of these sitting in the loft, when this is all hooked up, you can probably talk to this over the internet. Since then, Bordeaux Cosmo has been set up here. Oh, look at that. It's got a little description and then, yeah, Bordeaux Cosmo's up there and it goes up and connects to everything through that. Which means you can talk to it with any of these. There's about three of them around here so far. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Cosmo. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. But we are still talking. It does have a little bit of a problem with background noise, so that's something I've got to figure out. But apart from that, it's pretty damn good. If you want to see how MarkNet did the code and transferred Bordeaux code over to MegaHal and then back to Bordeaux code again in the Raspberry Pi, there's a link to the forum thread below as well as a couple of videos that he's made just describing what is going on. You can see a lot of other projects I'm working on at the minute in vlogs and stuff. I've been talking about this for the last few weeks over on Patreon, so if you want to support this venture and the museum and stuff like that, then go and check it out over there. You could also download that really dodgy, really short build montage song over there. But anyway, if you want to go and say hey to MarkNet, the links are below and that is enough from me and Cosmo and if you like what you said have a good subscribe and don't be scared to try it. Woo. Build it.